So we're here at the Grob Open House in Germany and we're going to be talking now about aerospace applications. So um, Tobias, if you just move that way slightly. Um, this is, I, I love this part and I'm sure there's lots of people looking at it thinking, well, what actually is it? So let's start with that, Tobias. We can you explain what we have here. So here we have a turbine blisk out of titanium, so very hard and very difficult material to machine. Um, this is actually a part of you considering sitting in an aircraft and you look into the wings, you will see our engine hanging off the wings. And this is actually a part which is running in the engine itself for giving the aircraft the power to fly. So it's a very critical component, a very critical part. And, uh, and what are the areas that are critical to, to machine and, and maintain? The, the specifically uh, very difficult parts to machine for sure. Uh, you, we have certain shapes inside, but also the foil itself the geometry of the foil, the root of the foil. Uh, this is the critical part because we have to make sure that all of those pieces running within a case and not hitting the case by a very high RPM. Um, it also is related to the force that can give it to the aircraft to bring it and keep it in, in the air. Uh, and also nowadays zero emission is a big point. So it's also very important that you, you have less noise reduction in regards if you machine them very accurate to a very precise surface finishing. Okay, so taking the, impo the importance and the critical nature of what we've discussed, yep. how do you then go about making one of these devices? Because I know it's done on a machine like this behind us. Exactly, so we can do this actually on a G350 turning machine. So previously, how such kind of a workpiece was machined was on the first stages just turning. So you put it on a turning machine, you turn the outside geometry, um, coming then later on after an op 10, op 20, you flip it over to a milling machine, starting the milling, uh, different features, hills, uh, drilling, some holes and, and, and certain stuff, the roots, um, some, some areas where later on a bearing will be sitting to really have one next to the other. And then finally, um, the really biggest challenge is the foil itself, the geometry of the foil, uh, the leading and the, the, the leading edge um, of the foil itself. So that is what, what is very critically. So you would have done this in what, three operations maybe previously, would that be right? Turning exactly. and then milling. Exactly. But now we're doing it all at once. Now we can do it all in once. We, we set a raw piece on our machine, G350 turning machine. We start with the turning operation, leave it there. Don't, don't unhook them or, or yeah, uh, bring it in a different allocation of the fixturing. We keep it and then we make the machining, the roughing and the finishing as well, all in one stage. Okay, now this is titanium, isn't it? This so is titanium. This is a difficult material to machine. Yes. Um, but doing it all at once means you don't get the possibility of, of introducing errors by moving it around. That's really, really important, isn't it? Is that the biggest part of this solution? It, it's majorly a very big part of the solution because otherwise you have to measure after each machining when you bring it from one machine to the other one and then you're probably losing accuracy of the workpiece itself. If you leave it on the table, clamped right from the beginning till you have the finished workpiece, like we can see it here, you have the highest accuracy that you can achieve. Okay, what, what kind of speeds would you be machining this at though? What's the important factors on a, a machine like this? Okay, we can turn and we can mill, but there are certain strategies you're going to have to adopt. Ex exactly, there's many different strategies uh, for, for the turning, different one like, like for the milling, um, and, and even even part has different strategies. As if, if you're focusing a little closer, you see little areas. So you can see we usually would machine roughing the first part, uh, finish the next piece, going to the next roughing. And so you make it step by step because you would like to have, as long as you can, the most stability of such kind of a wing. Because you can see it's very, very thin. If, 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 you, if you pick it, it will, it will give you some certain noise because it's so thin. Uh, that, that it would swing, actually. Okay, now how long is one of these then going to take you to machine now? You know, we've established we're doing it in one operation. Give our viewers, um, you know, an idea of how long it would take from start to finish. From start to finish for such kind of workpiece, easily 40 hours. Yeah, okay, it all, all depends quick. on the size, um, the features and so on. Uh, but if you really do everything right from the raw piece to the finished one, roughly 40 hours. Okay, now we're going to be looking in this machine in a minute because this G350 is um, is something else but before we do that there's one more application I want to touch on now and this is really relevant because the machine is actually machining one of these. Exactly it? we can so, see it running behind us. So yep. perhaps once again just explain what this is and the importance of of, of this part. Yeah so so having here the, the little turbine blisk size wise it goes up a size which is taller than I am 
uh, and therefore you have then the single foils. The single foils, similar, like you can see here, already uh, machined or part in as, as one of the whole. Um, you also can machine the single pieces. They have a specific route, which we can see here, and they will be in a, in a big disc. You allocate all of those single routes together. They will be welded together, and then you have a big turbine blisk. Um, what we're doing here is out of a solid piece, so we start with this solid piece, and we're ending up with this kind of single foil in the end. Same great shape and geometry, um, similar uh, features we have to consider, consumption, noise reduction, safety, high accuracy to not hitting any case uh, of, of the turbine itself. So this is all the same features which we're facing here or here. Okay, now this, I, it would strike me that you need to kind of support this very well, don't yes. you? The work holding is critical. Yep. So let's maybe then just talk about how we're doing it on this machine because yep. it is happening behind us. So you would start with a solid block like you can see here. You would clamp them on a zero uh, clamping point outside on a device. So a robot or pallet pool system will bring them in into a vario table. Um, you have seen on our property that we have over 1,000 engineers in the R&D department, and that was a special request from our customer just a couple of years ago. Uh, make us a machine with a possibility of an option to have a very high dynamic table with a hydraulic clamping, uh, which you can steer by a CNC coat so that you're not manually clamp or unclamp, and making sure the workpiece comes out in a perfect shape. So that is what we have designed actually over here. So we bring in, in the raw block, which you can see here on the wise. Then from the top, fully automated, the counterpart picks up, allocates the other side, makes sure it, it consistency holds them, that we have enough power to make the rough milling. After we have done the rough milling, we unhook the upper wise to make sure we unstress the material, hook on a hook up on a different level that we're not clamping in the same uh, finger areas which we have clamped before, that we have perfectly synchronized and aligned from the top to the bottom, and then we're going on with the finishing process. Uh, it's brilliant to see it in, in the background here in action. Um, great solution, but let, let's now let's just touch on them before we finish the actual machine itself, the yes. T350, because this is a real brilliant machine for aerospace as well as other applications, it? Isn't absolutely it absolutely is, yeah. 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 So as I said, um, as we have this kind of power in-house with us over 1,000 engineering people in the R&D department, we really have the chance, even in a very short notice of time, if a customer has a special request, like this kind of high dynamic table or different lengths or geometries of options to need to machine in the end in a perfect way such kind of workpiece, we are very capable to do that. But it's very, you mentioned the word dynamic, watching it move, the, the, the quick movements, the acceleration, the deceleration. Uh, These are all such important points, aren't they? And when you're building the machine to what it can deliver a, from, a, from a part perspective. Exactly, on this kind of machine, by hydraulic uh, clamping from the top, we can machine pieces which are roughly 70 millimeters up to almost uh, 400 millimeter lengths of single foils. Uh, so you can consider even little pieces, which we can see, uh, that's just a segment, but also we can do single foils, um, like you can see those. Um, so for sure it depends on, if you machine a smaller part, you have to spin a couple thousand RPMs. Um, if we're talking in the end um, about this kind of pieces, we're only spinning a couple hundred RPMs, uh, because, which is very critical and important to achieve such a great surface finishing, is that we have always, over the whole circle, the same feet and speeds. And the aerospace sector is, is big for you guys, and it's not just about parts like this, structural components as well, you've got machines for that, so it's becoming a big part of Grob's offering. Ab absolutely, as of this very moment, I just checked it this morning, we have more than 800 machines at this very moment, sitting somewhere around the world at our uh, aerospace customers, and making machining aerospace parts. Out of those uh, almost 800, we have approximately 450, 500, which are majorly machining um, um, engine parts, so engine parts is what you're seeing here. What we can also do with our other parts are structure parts, majorly aluminium, where we have an aluminium beam. It also looks like this, just bigger, where we're milling out all the pockets that we reduce as much as weight as we can, but even have the reachability inside of an aircraft to hold the wings or the structure of the body itself. So when someone's sitting on their aircraft, the next journey, there's a high likelihood that some of the parts that you can you can see or that are carrying the aircraft have been made on one of these. That is exactly the case, yeah, you're right. <laughs>